What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, you're going back again with another reaction video. Okay, so for our last video of the day, this is going to be our last video of the day. We're taking a look at just how good was Marco Van Basting. Uh, now, I'm not too, I'm not too aware of Marco Van Basting. I know, I've heard his name before. I know, like, he was one of the greats, but I'm not too aware of him. So, we're going to be checking him out right now. Video by Raymar Football, which so, so this should be nice and in-depth kind of analysis of his game, his accolades, you know I'm saying, how good he was. Uh... That's all I have to say. Link in the description if you want to check out this new video. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and let's run up the vid starting now. Throughout football history, there's only been one classic striker to ever win the Ballon d'Or three times. The most of anyone who's... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> three times. <laughs> three times. I mean, Ronaldo the Phenomenal was a striker, right? And he won it three times. But then, nonetheless, three times. How is he not in the top ten greatest of all time? Bro, there are a lot of people that have three Ballon d'Ors that I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, what is going on? Like, like Beckenbauer, for example, he has two and he's a defender and I didn't know him. This dude has three and I didn't know. I just, I thought it was like as good as like Van Persie. I didn't, I didn't know he was on the... Or the upper echelon type, you know what I'm saying? I thought it was like Van Persie type good. I mean, Van Persie's a proper, but he's not three ball on the oars. Let's go, let's go. Ever played at the nine position. That man is no other than Marco Van Basten. So just how good of a player was he to win that award that many times? Yeah, educate me. Where does he rank among the all time greatest footballers? Let's find out. Mm -hmm. Marco van Basten was born in the Netherlands and spent his entire childhood learning about the game of football, playing for a local team since the age of six. Van Basten's family was also heavily influenced by the game. In fact, his older brother Stanley had even aimed to be a professional footballer, but just wasn't quite good enough. Marco, on the other hand, was the hidden gem in the family and had incredible potential as a young player. Ajax would hear of this local sensation and sign him when he was only 16 years old, which is quite ironic as they were the same club that had rejected his older brother Stanley years back. Van Basten would make his professional debut for Ajax in the very same season that he signed his contract. Amazingly enough, he would go on as a substitution for no other than the late, great Johan Cruyff. Quite fitting, knowing how great his career would end up as well. But back then, nobody had any... Those are some massive shoes to fill. You come on for Johan. And he filled that nicely. He Johan 3? Oh yeah, I'm putting in 3 as well. In terms of following your numbers. Let's go. The 16-year-old Van Basten would become... It would take him less than a year to start making a big name for himself, as the very next season he would score 13 goals in 25 appearances, helping Ajax win back-to-back -back Eredivisie titles, even seriously challenging the current European top scorer and first-choice striker for the Netherlands, Wim Kieft, for a starting spot in Ajax. He would go on to impress the club management so much that they would sell Kieft the very next season just to open up a spot for Van Basten and solidify his role as the starting striker. By his third year in the 1983-1984 season, Van Basten would break out as a young superstar. The 19-year-old would be named Eredivisie's top goal scorer for the season and also win the European Silver Boot as the second highest goal scorer in Europe by scoring 31 goals in 31 appearances, something incredibly insane for his age. Fellow Dutchmen were saying that he would be the country's next generational talent, like Johan Cruyff. Although they played quite differently, they just showed so much talent at their position that watching Ajax's young star was a must for football fans back then. But there was also a time where Van Basten was criticized as a one-dimensional striker. However, by his fourth season, he would prove many doubters wrong. He would go on to score 27 goals and have 20 assists in 38 appearances, having a .71 goals per game ratio, complementing it with .53 assists a game, becoming the Eredivisie top scorer yet again, as well as finally winning the Dutch Player of the Year award, getting his third Eredivisie title and finally silencing the critics, proving that he could also help his teammates find goals and succeed as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, Van Basten's footballing IQ was among the best ever. On top of his acrobatic athleticism, amazing touch, and great positioning, you get an absolute threat at the striker position. Yeah, I'm Van seeing Basten. Lewandowski type behavior in terms of the highlights. 
I just have to say that. I'm seeing Lewandowski type behavior because I'm taking a look at some of the highlights and I'm seeing Lewy type behavior. So it was like the finishing, positioning, you know what I mean? Let's go. He's also great with using both feet and had a nice frame for scoring headers, yeah. demanding attention from a defender to mark him at all times. Lastly, Van Basten has the third highest penalty conversion rate in history, scoring 51 of the 54 penalties he's taken throughout his career. An incredible 94.4% accuracy, That's making impressive. him an incredibly calm and collected player that you could trust in clutch moments. In the 1985-86 season, Van Basten would have a monstrous 39 goals and 4 assists in 34 appearances, an insane 1.15 goals a game, finally winning him the European Golden Boot, winning the Eredivisie Top Goal Scorer Award for a third time, and also winning the Dutch Cup. But he wasn't done there, as on his 7th and last year with Ajax, Van Basten would have the highest goal scoring season of his career, with a mind-blowing 44 goals and 9 assists in 40 three appearances, winning back-to-back -back Dutch Cups as well as the UEFA Cup. Van Basten was known as the best striker in the world and to some, even the best player in the world, but had yet to win anything official to warrant that title. Every club in the world wanted Van Basten as he was a proven goal-scoring beast, but later that year, in 1988, as fate would have it, a reviving AC Milan would pick him up and sign him as their go-to striker to help revive their declining team at the time. However, some concerning health issues would start rising up for Van Basten around this time, which we'll get back to later on, as it would be important in the future. He played only a total of 19 matches due to constant ankle issues. There wasn't mm. any particular severe injury or event that caused this, but Van Basten's ankle seemed to be quite injury prone and fragile. Despite that, his talent was still there, scoring 8 goals in that time, a .42 goals per game ratio despite never being in good form that entire season. Van Basten's second season in Milan, however, was arguably the finest he'd ever have. He played the most games of his career, appearing in 47 matches and scoring 33 goals while providing 33 assists. Incredibly insane for someone in his position back then. Showing his skills with more than just putting the ball in the back of the net. That's that might impressive. might have been the most efficient goal-scoring season of his career, yeah. with only .70 goals a game, but it was definitely the time he played with the most heart and passion. Van Basten would be Milan's top goal scorer and help his club win the European Cup slash Champions League and Supercoppa Italia, ending a 20-year drought of European dominance for his club. So you might think, yeah, okay, he won the Champions League, but how is it the finest time of his career? Well, during the 1988 European Championship, Van Basten would go on an absolute tear and help the Netherlands win their highest prestige title in history, scoring five goals, which included a hat-trick against England, a clutch 88th minute last goal against West Germany in the semi-final, and scoring in the final itself, as well as winning the player of the tournament along the way. Such an amazing year would win Marco Van Basten his very first battle on door, which I don't think anyone could have disagreed with seeing how amazing he was. He would once again maintain his position as Serie A's top goal scorer in the following season, further continuing his success and the club's dominance in Europe. He would go on to score 24 goals and have 5 assists in 40 appearances, which, while great, isn't really that insane. However, he would be crucial for his club's success that year. In fact, they would go on to win back-to-back -back European Cup slash Champions League titles, where he would once again come up big in the final against Benfica by providing the game-winning assist to his fellow countryman Frank Rigard to win 1-0, along with winning the Intercontinental Cup and the European Super Cup. And Van Basten would win back-to-back -back Ballon d'Ors as well. Van Basten just happened to be the biggest talent and top goal scorer in his club who absolutely dominated the past two years. He was so valuable for his club, in fact, that after a fallout with former manager Arrigo Sacchi, AC Milan owner Silvio Berlusconi sacked Sacchi just to make his star player happy. And it wasn't like Sacchi was any other manager as well. He was responsible for reviving AC Milan to its former greatness. So you know just how important Van Basten must have been. That's like sacking Sir Alex Ferguson in the height of his career just because he got into an argument with Cristiano Ronaldo, more or less. The 1990-1991 season would be the worst for Van Basten, scoring 11 goals and getting 10 assists in 35 appearances, which surely isn't terrible, but not, not terrible. close to the dominance the world was yeah. used to seeing from Van Basten. Yeah, Milan that's also true. struggled a bit this season, because while they did win the European Super Cup and Intercontinental Cup yet again, they fell short on the Serie A title by falling in second place and were eliminated in the Champions League quarterfinal by Marseille. And of course, Van Basten led the club in scoring yet again. 
Now, in the 91-92 season, they had finally taken the Serie A title back, with Van Basten scoring the most goals in the Italian league since 1965, ending the season with 29 goals and 13 assists and 38 appearances, a .76 goals per game ratio, something people were more used to seeing from Van Basten. Interestingly, Van Basten was also the first player to ever score four goals in a single Champions League match, which was an immortalized performance with the iconic picture of him scoring one of his goals during that match with no other than a bicycle kick. I'm sure you can imagine just how incredible four goals in the Champions League back then it must have been. It's just like if we see Ronaldo or Messi score a new single game record for goals. Van Basten was that type of player in his time. Van Basten's final year for Milan in the 1992-93 season saw him scoring 20 goals and getting 5 assists in 22 appearances. His most efficient goal-scoring year in Milan with .90 goals a game. Amazing to see, even after 7 years with the club, he still had more to show the world. Milan would continue their unbeaten run from the previous season to finally end with 58 matches without losing. This would impress even the doubters that said Van Basten was finished. He would win his third Ballon d'Or, making him the third player in history after Johan Cruyff and Michel Platini to have ever won the award at least three times. However, remember how I said Van Basten had very injury-prone ankles? Well, he would suffer a major injury that season that would put him out for the better half of a year. This injury would be the third time he would ever get ankle surgery in his career. Oh. Van Basten had hoped he could recover enough in time for the 1994 World Cup. But as history would have it, he would never recover. He tried many times over the course of two years to complete his rehabilitation, but his body just couldn't handle it and he could never play again. He unfortunately had to sit on the sidelines to watch his club win their third Champions League title during his time with Milan. And everyone knew that he wanted to be on the pitch. Unlike many athletes that I've talked about who have suffered the most horrendous injuries and made comebacks, even though they weren't anywhere near their old form, Van Basten just wasn't lucky enough to return. He would admit defeat over his battle for recovery on August 17, 1995, with an incredibly emotional farewell at the San Siro Stadium. I mean, just imagine. By the time he won his third Ballon d'Or, he was only 28 years old. He could have easily played five more years and have been playing at a high level if he had never had that third surgery. Milan was still a dominant team without him, so imagine if he'd been there the whole time. I honestly believe he would have won at least one more Ballon d'Or during his career. He was just too great. He maybe could have even won five. We'll honestly never know. That's why I believe Van Basten is football's biggest what if. No other player really had the same story as him, finishing his career so early despite having so much success. It's really sad to think about. Regardless of that, however, Van Basten easily remains as one of the greatest footballers in history and could very well be one of the greatest strikers, if not the greatest striker of all time. Less than a handful of players can compare to what he did and what he achieved. Despite his short career, Van Basten showed the world what he was capable of. He made his country proud and immortalized one of the greatest clubs in history. And for that, he will always be respected and remembered. But before you guys click off, I know I've been gone for a while and I just want to let you know that I've been really busy lately for my final semester at university, but I'm happy to announce that I finally finished and I can finally focus on doing YouTube full time, which means a lot more videos will be coming your way. It's been a crazy journey because when I first- Okay, yeah. so that's the end of the video. All right, shout out to, um, to Raymar for finishing uni. Uh, but at 28, He retired at 28 right after a Ballon d'Or victory. Okay, yeah, that I did not know. <laughs> I didn't know he picked up three. I did not know he retired at 28. He could have had, what is it? He could have been had five, four, five, six. Okay, yeah, that's 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 crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's that's a little shocking to me. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Marco Van Basten, everybody. <laughs> he was really good. <laughs> he was really good. He was really good. Um, and I saw some of the highlights in there. Uh, he seemed to have the proper finishing. He was able to pick up. Uh, major assists in heavy years and like different years was able to pick up major assists.
but he had three balls in the yours. And in his third ball in the yours, he got injured? <laughs> what if? <laughs> like, no, literally, what if? What if he didn't get injured? This is one of them what ifs. And he said it right. And this is one of them what ifs. Like, what if he didn't get injured? What would have happened? Would he have gone on to win four, five, six, seven? Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm a little shocked right now. Um, But hopefully you enjoyed the video, though. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to even like, subscribe to the channel. And uh, let me know what you think about from best in the comments. Because, yeah. <laughs> My respect level is gone from, like, what is it? It was it was good before? Now it's, 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 it's up there. It's up there. It's up there. I didn't know he was this good. I knew he was good, but I didn't know he was this good. He's crazy good. Um, but yeah, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.